25th, 2024. Of course, we're live every single day in the mornings. We also have the drive through show in the evenings and a crap ton of videos. Um, I even broke down a lot of those into some uh, short form videos from today's live show, including uh, Costi's Merce Reveal. As well as. It was uh, good. It was good. A few of the other tidbits, but. Um, those are all out there in our YouTube channel. But, you know, we're here to talk about the Sweet 16. Also going to do any Q&A that you guys have. That is pretty much um, gloves are off. You guys can ask pretty much about anything. If we can answer it, we'll answer it. If we can't, we won't. Uh, of course, uh, I have some legal restrictions in that area, as you guys know. I had to sign some documents over the years. Non-def- non-defamation um, clauses. <laughs> Stuff like that. Hey, you do what you have to do to settle out of, out of it with some of these people. But um, anyways, you know, it is what it is. I don't think anyone, I don't think, I think everyone already knows about all that stuff anyway. Um, my name caller, Chris. That's what I do. It's one of your many redeeming qualities. Yes. Your name caller. <laughs> Which exonerates people from being scumbags, thieves, liars, you know, pretty much everything. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. You're a name caller. I'm a name dropper. That's what I do. I'm I'm, a, I I'm, drop names all the time. That's, that's I'm, my go. I'm, I'm a straight name caller. Um, you know, someone steals from me, lies, cheats, you know, all that other stuff. I call them out on it, which makes me a bad person. Name caller. Yes. Name caller. All right. Well, we're down to 16 teams in the NCAA tournament. Opening round was um, some upsets, and then it was chalk weekend, um, college basketball, chalkiest weekend I ever remember. Um, it means there's a lot of high seeds remaining in this tournament. Last year, in a tournament where uh, you know there wasn't a Final Four team that was a top seed, uh, this year, you know all the top seeds are still alive heading into the Sweet 16. Of course, last year, Purdue was out in the first round as a top seed. Chris, um, what would you would you see was the big thing from uh, from uh, you know your big takeaway from the opening weekend? Uh, you know, honestly, it, it, I think you said it perfectly. For the second weekend, it was just that you know how much chalk actually made it out, made it through the uh, through the storm. But not only that, just like the, the underdogs weren't really even covering in a lot of those games either. I mean. We did see, you know, your prototypical first round of the NCAA tournament, you know, games that were tight throughout and, uh, you know, back and forth the entire way. But then once the second round hit, you know, it was nothing that was really, there weren't any games that were really close to the number. I mean, I'm just looking at the, uh, like the Thursday card, you know, you had the, uh, the Arizona game against Long Beach that fell right on the number. And you had a tight game between Nevada and Dayton. And, uh, Outside of that, there weren't any games, like I said, that were kind of like really, really close to the number. There were just, it was either one way or the other, maybe like double digit victories left and right. So, yeah, I think once we got into the uh, into the weekend portion of the schedule, you started to see all the chalk that was making it through. You kind of knew that this was, teams were properly uh, properly ranked where a lot of them were supposed to be. Cost, any, uh, any observations there? The ACC is a lot better than I thought. I think we'd That's, see that every year, you know. We do, and for whatever reason, we we sort of overlook it a little. It's like I didn't in my bracket. I didn't have Clemson going to the Sweet Sixteen. I mean, I know they have that one guy that could actually just keep them in games, but the entire team played well. Um, it was it was a wire to wire finish for them. I mean, they were ahead from the start, and they never looked back. We know that UMC is very very talented i mean i i was sitting next to you at the sports book and you know everybody you you guys are so sharp you and you and um and jay that it's like why is the line three and a half against Izzo and michigan state like what everybody you know everybody was betting north carolina including myself and i just didn't overthink it it was just one of those games and and I've been on opposite sides of those plenty of times, but for whatever reason, like I just, that team is just not nearly as talented 
as North Carolina. And early on, they were getting all those buckets. They were getting those putbacks. They were getting the offensive rebounds. And I know that their main player getting hurt and hurt his wrist was a big factor of them not being able to, to keep up with North Carolina. But, man, they just – they routed them. I mean, the worst team that shouldn't have even got in was Virginia. And then, you know, you, you look at the other teams that are still in it, NC State's fighting for their lives. Ever, it's like it, it almost reminds me of that Kemba Walker tournament when they came in as such a low seed. Now, I don't think they're anywhere near as talented as what that UConn team was, but for them to win five games in a row for the first time ever in the ACC conference, win the AC conference, and then be able to show up and and win the first week at a March Madness. I mean, that's seven straight games when you're playing all tough teams that want to win every single night is is very, very impressive. Um, I watched them a little bit this year. I wasn't a huge – I didn't really watch too many NC State games. But, man, they have, they have three or four guys that are just – they have the defensive stud. They have the point guard that could score. And they have two big men that one could shoot threes and is long, and the other guy's 290 pounds, and he looks like Escalade from the N1 videos. Love that guy. I mean, I love that guy. He is just like lightning in a bottle. Like, should be a defensive lineman and probably really good at it, but decided to play basketball and is just really good. <laughs> this is the Pig Dogs radio logo. <laughs> I like that. Just looking. Lightning in a Lightning in a bottle of hot sauce. Of hot sauce, yeah. Hot, well, he's not hot sauce. He doesn't dribble like hot sauce, but this is true. This is true. Guy, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm so, still annoyed that Virginia made the tournament. We got robbed of Indiana State and Robbie Avila in the tournament. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Jay kept saying his name over and over again yesterday. So Abdul Jabbar. So have, have you heard? Have, have you have you heard the other ones that have come out? Uh. Uh-uh. Milk Chamberlain, Milk Chamberlain, <laughs> with the goggles, with the goggles, he's Larry Blurred. Larry Blur, oh, that guy is great. What else? Uh, yeah, Larry Blurred, Larry Nerd, College Jokic. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, the guys, it's pretty good. He can do it all. He does. He's basically baby Jokic. But the ACC, ACC man, shoo, representing the Big East as well. Um, so Big East. Has- we knew that. We knew. We talked about this a lot. Big East always represents. Yeah, it. They definitely do. You know, it's like, but you know, the ACC does as well. You know. The ACC does as well, and they just never get the ink. You know, you look at the Final Four, it's, you know, in, in the recent years. The ACC is the constant, you know, that's, that's there every year. You had Miami last year. You had North Carolina the year before that. Virginia um, won the year before that. You had, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's every single year the ACC is there. And every single year, it's the talk is how the ACC is uh, down. So, um uh, to me, it just, that's why it just never makes a lot of sense. Yes, I, I apologize. Comunidad Parlay. Um, it was uh, I was under a spell in Las Vegas. I did not do videos for a couple of days. I, I take full responsibility for my actions, and I'm willing to take the consequences that come along with it. Well, we're going to make up for it, and we're going to do, uh, you know, this show. And, of course, we got Q&A as well as, uh, you know, we're going to go th- right through the bracket here and uh, do our Sweet 16. Tried to make a video earlier, you know, just a quick live announcing that we would do this, but, um, you know, not so successful. We got Arizona taking on Clemson uh, to get things started. And... Uh, Arizona opened as a seven-point favorite, but it's down to six and a half. Chris, what are you thinking of this one? You know, early look. I mean, we're not going to hold anybody to this. If your opinion changes, it changes. But um, yeah, Arizona, Clemson. Yeah, for right now, I, I think that I'm still going to be rolling with Arizona. Um, Tommy Lloyd just has the team playing really well right now. This is normally when they 
step it up. And I just have to think that at some point Clemson's luck has to run out. They were able to, you know, take advantage of New Mexico at a cold shooting night. And, you know, Baylor in that game, you know, they just uh, they couldn't hit the threes. They shot 6 of 24 from three. They missed 10 free throws. Arizona, I'm not going to let them off the hook, I don't think. Um, well, this Arizona team, they shoot their free throws fairly well. They're still around the national average, but they're great from three-point range, great from two-point range. There's not a lot this team doesn't do well. Uh, I just think there's too much uh, power offensively for Arizona here for Clemson to keep up with for a third straight game. So give me Arizona. Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Arizona too. I mean, I, I, I was against Clemson last game. Um, and I get it. If they beat Arizona, I think I will truly be a believer. If they cover versus them, obviously it's six and a half. Um, I don't know if I'll be a believer in the next round, but Arizona is just one of those teams. They have everything you need for a perfect mold for a, a deep run in this tournament. They have, you know, the transfer from North Carolina, who's been exceptional. They have Larson, who's been really good. I mean, the guy does everything for the team. Like nothing better than to get a European guy that could do everything for you because the guy is going to outwork everybody. He's going to make free throws. He's got, he's a great teammate. I mean, I love everything about the the Wildcats. I mean, they, I feel like they underperformed during the year. They lost some bad games. Um, otherwise, they probably would have been a one seed, but I'm going to ride with the Wildcats here. I think they're going to just, it might be close in the first half, but I could see, I don't see Clemson keeping up and, and being able to, it's one of those like last game was their game. I don't think they could keep it going. I think Arizona is a different team than Baylor that has a lot more size that they could actually bring a lot of, it's going to be, it's going to be trouble for Clemson in this one. I don't know. I think, you know, when we saw Arizona struggle against Arizona state certainly has been, they've been vulnerable this season. I mean, they're the team that goes into uh, Cameron indoor beats Duke and then loses against Air, uh, you know, Oregon state. It's which Arizona team shows up. And, you know, we saw them lose to, to, uh, to, to Oregon um, in the Pac-12 tournament. Um, you know, an Oregon team that they had beaten twice in the regular season. And that what you got to do is you, you got to get into a lower scoring game. And, and that's where they struggle. You know, it's when you get into that defensive game. Washington State beat them. Oregon State, they could certainly be had. Um, Clemson, you know, we've seen them be had too. I mean, they lost at Miami. They lost to NC State. They lost against Notre Dame, you know. Not a good team. They lost against Boston College and Wake Forest, two other teams. You know, not in this tournament. Um, they were knocked out of the ACC tournament by Boston College. Uh, they have the ability to uh, to be there and the ability to get blown out. But I think the Arizona defense is a problem here, like a real problem. And I know they can hit the defensive boards, but I think they're going to struggle. I, I I'm going to tell you, man. I think Clemson keeps this close. Real close. It gives themselves a chance to win at the end. Whether they get across the finish line, I'm not sure. Because their defense isn't very good. But it's a lot better than Arizona's. I mean, a lot better. Um, Arizona, you know, ranked in the 200-plus in most defensive categories. And uh, offensively, you know, top 25 in most offensive categories. Except for free throws, where they're just 71.8%. Um, I don't know. I think puncher's chance here, at least early, you know, Clemson for me. Go to the next game and, wow, rematch of last year's championship game. So someone will not be going back to the finals um, of the two teams that went last year. They won't even be going to the final four or on to the weekend play. That's UConn taking on San Diego State. And we saw in the finals last year, it was too much UConn and not enough San Diego State. And the Aztecs had really fought hard to get there. Um, Ten and a half is a gigantic number especially considering it's a revenge spot and a UConn team that, you know, even in their last game where they were way ahead, almost lost the cover. Costi, what do you think? Do the, do the number one seeds just continue to roll and cover? No, uh, I it's too many points for me. Um, I'm going to go San Diego State. They're the type of team, again, I'm worried that if they don't get off to a good start and they because they don't play well from behind. Like if they keep the game close, they're 
a very tough team. And this is what happened in the national championship. They just got blown out. And but they're this team this year, man. I mean, their losses of late were against good teams. I mean, losses to New Mexico twice, Utah State, Boise State. Really, they're, you know, they're their only loss that's a little suspect, but UNLV is not that bad. Um, they still were a three-point favorite at UNLV. Outside of that, I mean, the, the team is a really good team, and they have good coaching. I don't know. I don't think anybody's going to get in front of UConn this year. I have them repeating um, in one bracket, and then I have – it's a switch-off I do. Basically the same exact bracket, but I do. The champion is different in each one. I have Houston winning one or UConn winning the other. Um, and for what I saw from Houston yesterday, I don't know anymore. I mean, they they struggled to finish that game, could make free throws. But UConn is one of those teams I could see winning this game, but they're not going to cover a double-digit spread here. So San Diego State for me. I think for me um... – I like San Diego State with the points as the early indication, but I just think also, you know, we saw UConn blow them out, and I think they know they can do that. So, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, these are these are tough games, good teams. Um, Pace is going to make the race, but I'm, I probably might lean to UConn and um, a game that I'll probably be looking at the live bet. But I still think UConn has the ability to put San Diego State away when I don't think San Diego State has the ability to put UConn away. And um, so if, if San Diego State's going to win, it's going to be a grind down to the end type game. Well, if UConn has the ability to, you know, have the scrubs in, in the last five minutes. You can't stand behind me and not say anything anymore. The what fans. All I want to know is what time is it? Am I the only one on West Coast time? Costi's keep... telling me it's not a thing to be on West Coast time. <laughs> he like. He goes, it's fake. You're back home now. It's East Coast. I said, Kai, it's not true, Costi. Like now, he said, I'm I can't like, have my coffee till. I didn't have my coffee till two o'clock because it was really eleven o'clock. I said, I, I couldn't do it. Is, so, it. is am I the only one? It's you're not the fake. only one. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm on East Coast time, but I'm just tired. Right. Maybe that's it. I'm just delusional. <laughs> I'm just tired, man. Where's Jay? At? He's gone, huh? Jay, Jay's uh. Not a very long night. Yeah. And early. I don't blame him. Don't, don't blame, blame me. I'm working on my baseball this afternoon. I, I didn't I didn't ask you how was the, the, the uh the pod in the on the first class should it was, I it was I've had better. Um I've had worse. So it's it's better than no pod. It's better than any first class that doesn't have a pod. It was not as good as, like, say, a Hawaiian or an American pod. Um, it was, it was definitely um, the problem. The thing about the pod also in this one is, was like it wasn't all that long of a flight, so I fell asleep before the flight ever took off. So I never really got the full experience, you know, to see how the, you know, what the food tasted like what the actual service was like and all of those other things. We Maybe have any a little oh, swag bag. I couldn't even find mine when I woke up. Like someone had taken it. <laughs> we have any women's March Madness uh, plays today? No, we don't. No, we're doing Sweet 16. All right, I got to go call Ant then. All right. Special guest appearance by he gets FOMO. Gets it's like it. I can't stand when he just stands behind me. And doesn't say anything. Like just say something. I have fans telling me in Vegas, like it's really weird. He just stands behind you. I thought he was your dad. Like so, I'm not playing that. Like that role play. And then stuff. he stands behind. And then he stands behind you when they're telling you that. And then he stands behind me. When he, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take UConn here. Um, was now eight straight tournament games for UConn that they've won by double digits. Um, I guess it's a revenge thing for, for San Diego State here, but spoiler alert, UConn's my pick to win the national title just because I think that every single game I looked at their path to the NCAA championship game, 
anybody they play, they have the advantage over. No matter who I was trying to make the case for on the other side, they, you know, UConn had the advantage. I think this game is no different. Um, I think UConn's just a better team here, and I think they uh, get another win by double digits. So give me the uh, the Huskies. All right. We'll move on to the next game, and it is North Carolina, Alabama. These guys played last year as well in a doozy, from what I remember. It wasn't an NCAA tournament game. I think it was a preseason tournament game. Wasn't that, Chris, like one of those November tournaments? That they played? Yeah, I think so. Take a look at the history of this one, and it will say. But, um, yeah, Carolina, Alabama, they played – November 27th, so that would be like the Thanksgiving tournaments. It was like, it says overtime, but it was actually like triple overtime, 103-101. These teams just really, you know, it was two years ago, and, um, or it was last, no, it was last year. And these teams, they just really matched up well. Um, I got to say, you know, Alabama, very, very impressive, putting away Grand Canyon, who, you know, for all for all the good and bad that they did, um they uh, they really made Alabama's offense look bad. You know, it's an Alabama offense that scores a lot of points, over 90 points per game. But the Tide, they just look disjointed and, and out, of, out of place. And I think a lot of that had to do with what Grand Canyon was doing. Um, I think if Grand Canyon had any kind of offense, um, if they had any kind of offense at all, they would, um, they would have won the game. Well, Carolina just looked like a machine out there against Michigan State, just busting them up, something fierce. But Michigan State came back several times in that game, but Carolina just kept holding them back and holding them back. I think this is another tough one, but I, I just think that, you know, I'm not a, generally a number one seed guy, but I like Carolina here. Uh, I think they cover as well. Yeah, I'm taking Carolina as well. Um, it's just still, again, the problem with uh, with Alabama's defense. And that game against Grand Canyon isn't going to you know, tip the scales too much for me there. This Alabama team still has some issues on that end of the floor. And North Carolina, a balanced team that you, know, you don't want to have those kinds of issues against. I like this Alabama team, but I think North Carolina is one of the few teams that can match them score for score. But uh, Tar Heels has a much better defense there. So give me North Carolina in the points. Oh, this one I've been going back and forth. I mean, back and forth. This is probably one of the toughest ones for me out of the entire matchups of the Sweet 16. I mean, because Alabama played probably one of the toughest outer conference schedules that I've seen. I mean, they lost to, they beat Oregon, which we know Oregon was pretty good at the end. Um, they played Clemson out of conference. They lost that game. They beat, they lost to Purdue, lost to Creighton, lost to Arizona. I mean, this is all out of conference. And then in conference, their losses were to Tennessee, who's in the tournament, Auburn, and Kentucky, who was in the tournament, and then Tennessee again. I mean, most of their losses we're against really formidable opponents. I just, and I get it, they're really good. But early on, I almost don't think that it's that Alabama really beat them. It's Grand Canyon beat themselves because they couldn't score in the half court at all. I feel like they had, a, they had an opportunity there. And they could not have anything else except fast breaks and... Like I said, I think this one's really close. Um, not as confident North Carolina with the same spread like it was versus Michigan State, but um, I'm going to definitely lean on UNC here. All right. We go to the final game of the night. And it is... Where was that? It is... I think it's Illinois Iowa State. Yeah, it is. Illinois Iowa State, Chris. It's you. Yeah, I'm gonna take Iowa State here. Um I like this Illinois team. I like Terrence Shannon Jr., but I just feel that 
as much as I've bashed Iowa State and just haven't wanted to get on their side, they haven't steered me wrong in their first couple of games. You know, they held Washington State in check. They held South Dakota State in check. Um, Illinois, yeah, that you beat up on Moorhead State and Duquesne, but I think this Iowa State team is just a lot of things really well. I think they're just a better version of Illinois. Um, you know, especially on the offensive end of the floor, you know, they're, they're efficient shooting their field goals. But on the defensive end is where you really see Iowa State's defense and Iowa State's uh, metal come to play here. So I think uh, I think Iowa State gets it done. We're only being asked to lay a point and a half with what I feel is just a much better team. So I'm going to take uh, Iowa State in this one, whether it's a point and a half or the money line, either way. Costy? Yeah, I'm on, uh, I'm on Iowa State here. Just uh, I get it, Illinois – has the firepower. I mean, look, Shannon can go off for 40 and they could still possibly lose this game. That I just don't think they have enough around him, even if he goes off because Iowa State's, which I don't think is going to happen. I mean, Iowa State's going to lock down on him. They're not going to have him beat them and they have the defense to be able to do that. And this team, you know, beat Washington State, beat San Diego State. I mean, sorry, um, South Dakota State, but in the conference tournament, Houston, Baylor, I mean, they beat up on really, really good teams. And this is their year. I mean, I want to see it. This this is that game that I need them to win. I mean, I expected Iowa State to beat Washington State. I didn't expect the cover. It was actually on the other side there. But um, I think at a one-and-a-half point spread, you you have to – take the Cyclones here. I think getting out of that first weekend was really big for them because of their lack of tournament experience. So Cyclones for me. I'm going to roll with Illinois here. You know, this just seems to be a good spot. This, they're just not getting a lot of respect this this year, so they're flying under the radar. Just seems to be a lot of value on this Illinois team, and, uh, you know, I think this game could come right down to the wire. Um, Iowa State, it's, they haven't been perfect. They've been very, very good. They haven't been perfect, and Illinois, I think, has been as good, but just not getting the recognition. They play in, you know, what I believe is a much softer conference. But um, I think that game where they went into Iowa in the last game of the season, I know Iowa wasn't a tournament team, but winning in Iowa is never easy. They went in there, they just busted them up. I mean, I, I'm going to go with Illinois. I just think uh, they're the team. But So we're through the Thursday games, and that's how fast it happens. You go from all day um, basketball – and uh, you know the NCAA tournament, one of those things that it really does kind of have a uh, a big lull, you know, like in this weekend here, the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, and then you get to the Final Four the following weekend, and then really the championship game, not quite even as good as the Final Four, but um, sometimes they are, you know, they'll go overtime or whatever. But but that is the first weekend, the first game at 7:09, then 7:39. Then 9.39 and 10.09. So you're going to need two TVs for this one. We go to our next slate of games, and this is Friday. we got the two-seed Marquette taking on the 11 seed in NC State. I um, believe NC State is the highest-seeded tournament team left in the tournament. Costi, what do you think of this one? I've been with Marquette <laughs> this whole time. Um but I'm worried that they're not a team that could blow you out. I mean, from what I've seen, they depend way too much on Colick. If Jones doesn't have a great game, and I just feel like this NC State team is just just has that that umph that you just can't teach. They just have that confidence. They're they're there in every game. They're finishing games. That's what I like to see is the fact that when there's foul trouble. The big men are making fouls, and they have so many weapons. I mean, very undervalued all year. And I, uh, I didn't watch a lot of ACC, unfortunately. I, I really wasn't that informed till like maybe the beginning of February in this NC State team. And what I saw them and do in the in the tournament, like they're just hot at the right time. I do think Marquette is going to edge this game late, but NC State they have the the big men that I think are going to cause Marquette a lot of trouble. And if those big men get off to a good start and they're getting fouled and they're making free throws, um, I wouldn't be even surprised if NC State won outright. But I, I do think Marquette's going to edge them out late. 
but uh, NC State will get the cover. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to take the points with NC State. This team is, um, they're playing with house money, and uh, they're loose as a goose, you know. They, they know, you know, they, they get blown out. They've had a great run, nothing to hang their head about, and, uh, you know, or if they can continue to go on, they're the story, and uh, that's exactly how they're playing. They're just loose as a goose. I really hate going against teams like that. And while Shaka Smart is our guy, um, he's more of our guy as an underdog in March, not as a favorite. So I think this game is probably closer than the six. And um, I'll take NC State in a game that I think is a coin flip. Chris? Yeah, I'm going to take NC State in the points as well. Um, at least for now. Um, I just don't know if they're going to have right, any size this inside. This is just the... for now. This is our first look. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now I'm just, I'm just leaning towards NC State. I just initially I look at, at the size inside. I just don't know if uh if Marquette's going to be able to slow uh, slow down NC State in that regard. And I think these are two teams that can just flat out shoot it. So, you know, when I see six and a half with with NC State, I think that's just where I want to be. I think this is a three or four point game. So, give me uh, give me NC State in the points. We move on. Got uh, I keep losing my page. We got Purdue versus Gonzaga. These teams played, I believe, earlier this season. Let's see. They did. They did. So, how about the Maui Invita- Maui Invitational this year in in Oahu? Um, you want to talk about getting it right? I mean, look at the teams that were in that tournament. And you look at, uh, you know, this. It's like, man. It's basically, you know, a pretty good version of this. But Purdue won that game 73-63. They're five-point favorites. I, I don't think the Zags were as good then as they are now. And uh, I think Gonzaga is a very, very dangerous team. I, I like them here. And I, I like them outright. I, I think they beat Purdue in this game. I think Zach Eady is certainly playing well. He's playing with purpose. But we see these guys, player of the year guys, go out all the time in the NCAA tournament. It's rare that Magic Johnson faces Larry Bird in the finals. You know, It's a rare day um, that Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan face off in the finals. It's rare. I mean, it's, this is how, I mean, look how long ago we're talking. You know, Hakeem Olajuwon versus, um, you know, I mean, how long Patrick Ewing, I mean, how long we, you know, going back here? Long time. So, uh, I don't know. I think, I think Gonzaga, I just think they shoot the ball better than Purdue, even though Purdue's a great shooting team. I think Gonzaga's even better. And uh, I'm going to roll with the Zags in this one. Especially with, yeah, I'm take- I think it's a generous point spread. The line yeah. in the first meeting was five. This one's five and a half. Five and a half. Both neutral sites. Yeah, I'm going to take a dag in the points in this one as well. I, I agree. I think they have gotten better as the season's progressed. Um, you know, that back then was when we were trying to figure out what this get Gonzaga team actually was. You had Graham E.K. coming from Wyoming. You had all this new, this new fresh, these new fresh faces for Gonzaga. And they've started to pick it up as the season's gone on. And Gonzaga, for me, is also a team that can, you know, give Zach Eady fits inside. We've seen the first two games of the tournament. Purdue's just fed Eady in the paint and just let him go to work. Well, I think that Gonzaga can clog up the paint and make life diff- difficult. And we've also seen, you know, the first two matchups for Purdue haven't been teams that can shoot with Purdue the way that Gonzaga can. So give me a Gonzaga in the points in this one. Costi. Yeah, consensus for me. I'm going to take the points here. I, I don't think it is a – I'm not going to get greedy and take Gonzaga on the money line, um, even though I have Purdue not getting out of that that bracket. Um, it's going to be a close game. I'd rather have the points in my back pocket. Yeah, when they played very early in the season, 
that's not the Gonzaga team that we're seeing now. You, you could see the coaching. You could see the flow. Um, some of the freshmen are playing a lot better um, for the Zags. And Purdue is one of those teams where they'll beat up on crappy teams. And that's so far, that's what we saw. I mean, Utah State is not Gonzaga. And, you know, it's you saw the super blowout, but I think they're going to have trouble with this team. And I think uh, the Zags are going to be ready for it. Like I said, in this one, I've been fading Purdue so much this year. This is a, it's a good spot, getting five and a half. Got uh, Houston versus Duke, good old fashioned David versus Goliath type battle. Duke loves being the dog. Boy, they don't get to be the dog too often, but they sure love being it. Chris, uh, what do you think of this one? John Shire is going to just I mean, be in all of his glory. <laughs> yeah, but I think they're a dog here for a reason. I like Houston. Um, it's just that relentless Houston defense. And while my my concern with Houston is always that there's like one game where Houston has to rely on the defense a little bit too much and the offense doesn't show up. We haven't necessarily seen it so far in the tournament. I know it, it got a little bit dicey against Texas A&M, but uh, I still think Houston has more than enough here in the tank to to get the winning cover over the Blue Devils. So give me Houston in the points. Costi? The way I see Duke winning is – if they could match the threes from Houston, that means they need to have McLean go off for 30. I don't think it's going to happen. The guy went over his average by a long shot outside of him. I mean, Jeremy Roach is not somebody that you could lean on outside of just being a really good point guard. He's not going to get you five threes a game. I think Houston has more firepower and they're going to have to have, you know, Filipowski, go, you know, against these huge big men for Houston. I just think Houston is much better team. Um, Duke beat up on James Madison. James Madison wasn't ready for a top contender. They were good in their conference and they made a good run, but Duke has lost to teams that are really good this year. And when they played North Carolina last, they got absolutely steamrolled. I think Houston is one of those teams that I have in the finals for a reason. And I think they get the job done. I know they got, uh, you know, they didn't cover last game and they actually blew it, but that's really because of their free throws. I mean, their free throws were horrific. And it was good free throw shooters, guards that were missing free throws. I don't know what that was all about. And they let um, Texas A&M back in, but I think Houston wins this game pretty easily. Yeah, I think Houston does as well. Um, I think that Kelvin Sampson is a great coach. He's not a good coach. He's not just a coach. He's a great coach. In fact, if it was Coach K versus him, it would be a closer matchup than he than Shire is to him. Um, I think that um, you know Houston last year, you know, went to the tournament as the number one seed, didn't get it done. Um, this year, they've been absolutely dialed in and focused on doing that. And I think. When you have a team that doesn't do all the things right and doesn't play their best game in the most important moments and all those things and still wins, that's a really good team. So when they're on and when they're focused and dialing, because my guess, probably going to be a tough week of practice, even though it's you know tournament time. Probably going to be a lot of free throw practice um, this week. And I don't think it's going to change these guys' um, ability to shoot free throws. I think it's certainly going to make it um, that they don't want to do that again. And uh, I, I'm going to go with Houston in this one. I think they win pretty comfortably. I mean, Rod's saying if you could, if you could let, if, if A&M can almost beat you, um, you know, then... Duke can beat you. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I have to strongly agree with that one. Um, you look at Duke and you look at their eight losses compared to Houston's four losses, and you look at who those were to, it doesn't say that same story, you know, because you could easily say the same thing here. If Wake Forest beat the shit out of you, 
you know, Houston certainly could beat the shit out of you, a non-tournament team. If uh, Carolina could beat you, Clemson could beat you, um, you know, if, if Pitt can beat you, another non-tournament team, if Georgia Tech can beat you, if Arkansas can beat you. I mean, Texas A&M is from the same conference as Arkansas. You know, Arkansas was an afterthought this year. I mean, they didn't make any kind of tournament, not even remotely close. They beat Duke. You know, so I, I, I don't see it um, that way. A lot of times they do, but not here. I don't know if they Texas A&M almost beat them. It was Texas A&M got led in the game. Right, they got led in the game. It was a double-digit lead for a good portion of the game. Yeah. It was nine. You know, the lead was eight to ten for a very long time in that game. Missed free throws, then they hit a buzzer beater. Yeah. To take it overtime. I mean, they were never ahead in overtime. So. And Cryer, uh, I mean, Cryer had a miserable minute. Last horrible. Minute of the game. Horrible. Horrible. Man. Horrid. Turned it over, missed the shots. Like, things you just don't see from him. I mean, you could easily see him go 20 of 20, you know, not miss another free throw the entire rest of the tournament. Yep. And Shed was missing th free yeah. throws. Like, yeah. these guys are good free throw shooters. Yeah. We saw, um, you know, we saw Duke struggle in their opening game in the tournament a little bit in, uh, against Vermont. I mean, they pulled away late, but the first half was close, and, that defense, they played Vermont and James Madison, not even close to what they're going to see in this one. Anyways, go to our final game of the slate here. It's Tennessee and Creighton. I don't know, it's, uh, is it me or these teams, they haven't played, but boy, it sure feels like they played each other before. No, I don't think they played. No. It's an interesting matchup, for sure. Chris, what are you thinking? I'm leaning towards Tennessee, laying the two and a half here. Um, I just, I, I think this is going to be a defensive war. Maybe the under 143 and a half is going to be in play as well. But I think Tennessee's defense just proves to be too much here. Um, I was disappointed with how they didn't put away Texas, but still held the Longhorns to 58 points. Creighton is a team that we all know. We've seen it before. Is fully capable of coming not coming out flat, but having just an off shooting night, and and a lot of times it doesn't mean more often than not. So you can only rely on the defense so many times if you're creating and get away with it. I think Tennessee takes advantage. I think Tennessee is the far better team and take the balls to uh, get the winning cover here in the two and a half. Costi, yeah, I'm I'm leaning toward the balls too, um, and I get it. I mean, on paper, Creighton is beat some of the best teams in the country out of the Big East. Um, they've had some tough losses also, but they've shown that if they play their best basketball, that they are one of the best teams, not in the only 16 left, but top four. I mean, they, they beat up on really good teams. Um, but Tennessee, they're out of conference. You know, they, they took the losses early. Um, but they figured it out since then, losing to Purdue, losing to Kansas, losing to North Carolina back in November. We don't really care about November basketball, but I feel like that set them up to have a really good run in the SEC. And again, with Creighton, Oregon had that game. Oregon, again, lost that game. Creighton didn't, I mean, they won it, but bad inbound, Miss free throws by Dante. I don't know why you're having your center shoot free throws at the end of the game when you need to make both of them. Um, again, Creighton snuck in there. Same thing in the, the overtime, the first overtime. Oregon just could not put them away. I think this is a much different team. Um, and I'm one of those guys. I know people have Creighton in their final four. You beat Tennessee, you'll have my respect in the tournament because I think this Tennessee team defensively, they are – huge and they have the guards they have you know um what's his name he's had a fantastic year what's his name Schecht or what's the, the shooting guard connect connect he's unbelievable and they have the the veteran point guard that's been there it seems like for 10 years <laughs> the guy's been there forever um 
for Sally. So, yeah, they. I like Tennessee. I have Tennessee in the Final Four. Um, would I be surprised and, like, jump out of my couch if, if Creighton won this game? No. But I, I do believe Tennessee has the firepower at the defense and – everything top to bottom to be able to win this game and, and make a, a real nice run to the final four. I'm with Tennessee as well. Um, I'm just not seeing it for Creighton. Like Costi said, Oregon, um, let it get away from them. And we saw Creighton vulnerable you know, many, many times this season um, against a strong defense is where they've struggled the most. That Colorado State game um, just has got to you know, stick in your mind. Um, the Providence game recently has got to just stick in your mind. So I'm going to take Tennessee. That's the early play for me. We'll see how that all, you know, pans out. But um, that's where it is. So that covers uh, the Sweet 16. And, uh, you know, I think I was real brave when I decided to do this show today. And I think I'm going to get a couple hours of sleep. But uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. We're going to... Uh, Try and do some more afternoon action here on this stuff, especially, you know, baseball's coming around. We'll have some late changes and all kinds of stuff for baseball. We'll have, um, you know, NBA, a lot of uh, moves, roster moves, things like that. We're going to try and add some more afternoon content. I know a lot of people have been contacting me about wanting to join our team. Um, I just haven't seen anything out there that says, man, you're going to make us a lot better, you know. So... Uh, don't say, well, I can send you this or I can send you that. Just freaking send it as long as it's not bad tickets. <laughs> bad tickets, I ain't looking. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Make it a winning day. We appreciate you, every one of you. Of course, we'll be talking about Sweet 16 all week long. And, of course, Thursday, play ball, opening day of baseball. How many games on the schedule, Chris? It's a full, full schedule, isn't it? Full slate. So, full slate of, of Major League Baseball. Um, it'll start early and late. Of course, Final Four or uh, Sweet 16 action all on the same day. So, uh, plus NBA. Make it a winning day. We appreciate each and every one of you. And, well, yeah, I'm going to try to act more professional tomorrow. Keyword try.